Um, I'm going to talk to you about proxies, which is a new uh, thing in JavaScript that we could start using. And the goal is so that everyone starts using this at some point if like the situation arises. Okay, so what's a proxy? A proxy is this intermediary between a target or, and like some outside world who wants to access it. Um, it'll define behavior maybe, or it's just a representation, or it's just this like middle layer. So for instance, there is a proxy war going on right now where the US and Russia are both factors in like Syria and like there's a civil war going on in Syria and they're supporting different sides and like maybe like the real thing that's happening is they're fighting each other. Um, there's a proxy server where a laptop sort of hides behind this proxy server and it like interacts with the internet through that. So there's a safety layer and you can like interact differently and pretend to be somebody else for instance. Um, I scores are proxy for the climate in like previous years. So these are all proxies. Yeah, so like I said, it's a placeholder. It's a representation of something else. And I guess most specifically in JavaScript's case, it's an agent that we define that acts for this target, whatever we want it to be, because the target lets it. So let's write like a pretty simple case of it. Um, this is the new proxy. Constant p equals new proxy target handler. What is a target? A target is basically any object that you want. Um, an object, an array, a function, a proxy itself. Um, we can put in like classes that we define and then put that in as your proxy uh, target. A handler is the proxy and it'll define our behavior. So the base case for like a new proxy object is like this. We'll just define a target as an empty object and a handler that does absolutely nothing. Uh, console logging P of A, before we define what A is, will first go through the handler, look for something that says, is there like an accessor function that I should change my behavior? Says it doesn't find anything, goes to the target, and we'll just use the object successor function. Um, now let's like set it. P of dot A equals hello world. Okay, now this will go through the handler. The proxy will go through the handler, look for something that has like a setter function. Doesn't find anything, goes directly to the target. The target is an object, uses the default object prototype. Cool. So again, a target is any object. And a handler is an object with traps. Okay. Now wait, what are traps? Okay. This is a trap. A trap basically is that thing that sort of catches the the like get getter method, like we're like looking for a getter method, catches it and prevents the default from ever happening. So every time you define a get, for instance, on this handler, every time we try to get any object off the target, it will go through, get to the handler, and in this case, this is just sort of like exactly the same behavior as before. Uh, we just pass in these uh, like arguments, target, property, and so then we just, this is like just the complete simplest thing, doesn't do anything, adds a bunch of abstraction, and there's a point to it later on. So it does exactly the same thing. It goes to P of A, gets like undefined, defines it, it's fine, there's no setter function and uh, returns the, passes to the handler and never reaches the target's assessor function. Okay, um, this is a slightly more complicated getter uh, trap. Um, this will give us a default value, um, checks if property is in target, so if A is a property of this object. Uh, if it is, return that. If it isn't, give this a default value. Does this make sense? Okay. So let's start, like, these are like the most basic ones, getters and setters. Uh, they're really useful for checking for accessibility, for instance. Say we want to set things to be private. We'll put a underscore in front of that function or that method or that property. Um, if we throw a proxy wrapped around that, 
you can sort of write in a sort of like check first if the property name starts with an underscore. Are you going to uh, let you set that property? Are you going to let you get that property? No, because we want it private. So this is like one very common usage. Um, getters can also return virtual properties, sort of like in SQLize when we defined like virtual columns off of our model that didn't actually exist on the target, but do exist sort of like to the outside world, to the internet, to whoever is who's trying to access this target object. Um, another cool use case would be searching through like a large, like a row or like an array of objects with different properties. Um, you could get a certain property and it could like do a little bit of logic and return to you whatever the value of that property was instead of going through like writing your own little function. A proxy is, is an abstraction. It, it's like, it lets you extend the, the like normal functions that we know how to like, uh, how to access certain properties off of an object. Um, so it's like very useful if you want to sort of like abstract one layer off and like make it do all the work in the background. So here's an example of like basic, very, very basic validation. Um, here we've got the setter. Okay, so every time we set a certain thing, it'll have to, it'll go to the handler, and the handler will be like, ah, oh, I've got a trap for that. So uh, passes in the target, the property, and the value. So let's say we want to set the proxy dot a equals uh, hello world. Um, that value will be, or let's see, let's let's set the Poisson number. So everybody, do we know what a Poisson distribution is? It's basically like a counting discrete distribution. It tells you the probability of like certain integers showing up. Okay, uh, so this one is like, so let's say we set the target is this object, um, and then the property is this Poisson number, and then we give it a value. We set equals some value. If this will check, this will validate your value. Um, and then at the very, very end, it will set it if you pass up like this validation thing. So here it'll throw an error if it's not a number. Here it'll be, if it's not an integer, it'll be like, oh, this is not correct. If it's greater than nine because it, you're only working with single digits, this isn't valid. Okay. So here are like maybe about half of the traps. Um, there's the getter we talked about, the setter. Has is a trap for the in keyword. So say we're like, property in object, this will like catch all of that. So every time somebody goes like, I have for, for property in our proxy object, the has one can take it, check it, check it, if, like you want to set it private, so like anything like that. Uh, define property is really cool. Define property will break if it doesn't want you to define a certain property on the, on the object, or you can define it to to define like three different properties at once, you can change it to do whatever you wish. Enumerate will get the four ins. Own keys will give you basically like object has keys, like you'll just like return the keys. Um, apply and construct are also really useful. Construct is uh, a prox uh, the proxy's trap for the constructor function. So if you're passing in a class and you want to like extend the constructor, which like everybody always tells you not to do, right? Um, you shouldn't be messing with the object prototype, like none of these things. Well, if you want to do it, you have to do it like the smart way, like the correct way of doing it is through a proxy. Um, apply will like apply arguments. It's really useful for uh, like, uh, so you can, I don't know, you can like list all the arguments that you pass in, right, to your proxy, okay. But you could also like decide to like format them, you could decide to like normalize them, you could do whatever you wish. Okay, and then last thing, this is like not even the last thing on proxies, but you can also revoke proxies. Um, say, here's a target, here's a handler, whatever. Um, you use this new proxy revocable on your target and handler. Um, the proxy works exactly the same, but you can call revoke, and you can call it many, many times, and basically it prevents you from ever accessing or doing anything with that proxy ever again. Um, I'll throw this error called like illegal operation. 
And so this is useful if somebody tries to like set their password multiple times, and like if they set it three different times, you could call it revoke somewhere in your proxy. And that is the end of my talk.